الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله indeed all the praise is due to Allah we seek Allah's help and forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil in our soul and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God, there is no deity, but Allah as a wajal exalted be Allah, the one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's final slave and messenger. Ya ayyuha ladina amanu taqu allaha haqqatu katihi walla tamutuna wa ila wa antum muslimun O you who have believed fear Allah is Allah alone should be feared and do not die except as Muslims in submission to Allah Ya ayyuha nas taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha وَبَعْثَ مِنْهُمَ رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنَسَاءً وَتَقُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى ذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا O people, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand mutual rights and revere the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is ever over you, our Aqib, an observer. Ya yuhaladin al-amanu taqo laha wa kulu kawlan sadida. Yusli lakum amalikum wa ya'afilikum dhanubukum wa may yutu ilaha wa rasuluhu faqa tawza tawza min adhima. O you who have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. Allah is a wajal within the men for you, your deeds, and forgive you for your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and Allah's messenger has certainly attained the greatest achievement, the greatest attainment. I mean, so few things are more important than understanding the role of charity in Islam. It is one of the pillars of Islam. It is a rukun. It is something that you cannot do away with. It is Allah's anyway. All of the money we have belongs to Allah. And he then asks us for a loan. He gives it to us as a trustee. And then he says, would you give me a loan? Imagine saying no to Allah, to a mandatory, obligatory loan that Allah has commanded of us. So I um, just want to thank those of you who do support this organization. Uh, for the new ones online, um, Monday I spoke at Eastern Florida State College. Tuesday last week I spoke at Valencia East Campus. Uh, this week on uh, Tuesday night, uh, there's an iftar um, honoring me with a residency, resident, pediatric residence of Advent Health. And we will have dinner and then I will be giving a speech to them on Wednesday about cultural competency in health care for Muslim patients and Islam post 9-11. So we'll be dealing with the physical and the psychological effects and how they can best do that. So we thank you for your support that allows us to do that. We thank Allah for the health and for the well-being that allows us to do that. And we pray that we will continue to be able to spread the true and peaceful message of Islam uh, in this world so that people will know that this is the perfect religion, that this is the deen that has been completed. There's no contradiction, there's no um, doubt. In this is a book where there is, there is no doubt, mashallah. So today I'm going to talk about the difference between zakat al-mal and the difference between zakat al-fitr. And I'll begin with Surah Al-Baqarah 110, the translation, and establish prayer and give zakat. And whatever good you put forward for yourselves, you will find it with Allah. 
Surely Allah sees what you do. So the context of the verse is prayer and zakat, and whatever you put forward in the means of prayer and zakat, it is stored in the vault of Allah. It is stored with Allah, and Allah sees and knows what you do. It's interesting that prayer and zakat are found together in 30 ayat of Quran, and zakat is mentioned 82 times. So hopefully this will help you understand the importance of charity in Islam. It, zakat in and of itself is a religious obligation on all adult Muslims to meet the requirement of zakat as dependent on nisab and hawth. Now, nisab we're going to talk about and hawth, so you want to remember that. And how is a 354, 350-day lunar year. So really, you want to keep in mind that you must have your finger on the pulse of the Islamic calendar. And we'll talk about it more, but it's to contribute generally 2.5% of savings that you have held for one year, and that would go to the needy. Now, this, of course, I'm speaking about the Kato Mad. I'm not speaking about the Kato Fitter yet. Remembering that this is the third pillar of the five pillars of Islam, just after prayer and before fasting. So if you think about how important, there are Muslims that will not practice Islam the whole year round, but they will fast in Ramadan. So if you think that it is between the prayer and Ramadan, then how important is it? So what does it mean? The word zakah in Arabic means purification, it means growth, it means blessings. Paying zakah is meant to remind Muslims to be appreciative of the blessings Allah has bestowed on them and then to empower those that have less. It is payable again at two and a half percent of the wealth one possesses above Nisab. So you're going to want to know what Nisab means. Nisab is equal to three ounces of gold. It is the minimum amount of wealth one must have before they are liable to pay zakat. And I'm going to be providing you with the form. Deborah so kindly redid it for us. Uh, I believe it's been posted to the group. Um, this number changes daily because it depends on the fluctuations in the gold and silver exchange rates. And I have provided a website here for you to find out the daily and hourly time. And what I would recommend to you is that you remember that this is based on the lunar calendar. So I would encourage you that in the future, perhaps on the 21st or the 23rd or the 25th or the 27th on one of the odd nights, of Laylatul Qadr, of the month of Ramadan, that each year on that day, you assess what you need to pay, and then you can pay it, and inshallah, get the blessings of the month of Ramadan. Now, zakat is liable on gold, silver, cash, savings, investments, rent income, business merchandise, and profits, shares, securities, and bonds. It is not paid on wealth used for debt repayment of living expenses such as clothing, food, housing, transportation, education, etc. It's also important to note and to consider whenever you are paying this, if you pay it with a credit card, 3% of that amount that you pay would be off. A lot would not be the people that need to get that would not be getting it the processing fees would be getting it. So um, if you add 3% to what you pay, this will compensate for any transaction fees deducted from your donation by a credit card, and it will ensure that the intended amount of the cop is actually paid. Now, how is defined as the completion period for a cop asset, and that's one lunar year. The wealth from which zakah should be paid must have been held at least one full lunar year. Now, there are some forms of zakah that do not require how, such as crops, uh, when zakah should be paid at the time of the harvest. Now, who is obligated to pay zakah? Every adult Muslim who meets the requirement of nisab and how in a calendar year must pay zakah. 
Now, there are some conditions that may require others, such as the Wali or guardian of a minor, guardian of a minor, for example, to pay the cop too. If you have specific uh, incidences, if you just email me that, I'll do the best to give you the best answer that I can find for you. Uh, let me remind you, um, many of our beloved sisters might have received a lot of gold when they got married or over the years. If they took that gold and put it in a, a safety deposit box and said, I'm going to keep this as an investment, then every year, lunar year, they would weigh the gold. Most of you probably know what it weighs already if you've been paying the cut on it. You would look at the price of gold per ounce, check your qualifications, and then you would pay that two and a half percent of the value of that gold. Now, if as a Muslima, your gold, you decide to wear it. So for example, every time you go to a wedding or you go to a, an event, you wear a piece of that gold, then it is not considered investment and you do not pay the cot on it. It is actually considered part of the accessories of your clothing. Now, the cot should be paid as soon as possible uh, around that lunar year time. And that's why I recommend paying it the same day every year. And again, the best time to pay it is why so many people do it is in the month of Ramadan. Now, according to the Holy Quran, chapter nine, Surah Tawbah, verse 60, there are eight categories of people who qualify to be beneficiaries of zakat. And that's the poor and the poor in, in our world would be considered people who be, live below the poverty level. Now I have to say as a social worker that the kind of poverty I've seen is not what America considers poverty. People that live in the poverty in America have microwave ovens, they have dishwashers, uh, they have a whole lot of luxuries and truly poor people don't have that. Now, because of the thicker akaliyat, the thicker minorities, and may Allah forgive us if we are wrong. Um, we treat the poor of, of those who are suffering to have the sort of basic needs here in America. Um, we are not quite as astringent, uh, but I do want to make sure I teach this correctly. So the eight categories of people who qualify to be beneficiaries of zakat are the poor, the needy, the collectors of zakat, those whose hearts are inclined toward Islam, captives. So today, uh, human trafficking would be an example of captives. We don't have a lot of issues with slavery anymore, but that would be an example. Those that are burdened with debt, those who are da'i, da'iyas, those in the calls of Allah traveling, those sa'is, those who are journeying uh, in the calls of Islam, and then the stranded traveler. And I know that uh, when we used to teach on the south side of town, every now and then someone would knock on the door of my class and say, well, we're on our way to New York and we ran out of money and we would give them money to travel back up to New York. Now, let me also talk and speak to for a moment the practical application of Zakat. If you write a check to Islam Inc. for this purpose, um, it is not actually for Islam, it is going to be given to other people. And this sometimes requires saving cash donations, uh, particularly when we're trying to help refugees in some cases, or we're trying to help someone who's been the victim of being exiled from their home, either via domestic violence or some other situation. Um, so please make a memo on your check that it is zakat, either zakat o mal or zakat o fitter. Now there is another form of giving, and interestingly enough, we call it sadaqah, and the our Jewish brothers and sisters call it sadaka. And so you can hear the somatic languages and how similar they are. That would be if you're just giving. Uh, you're just giving. For example, sadaqa is given when people are building a masjid, because if you'll notice in those eight groups, it doesn't mention the building of masjids. 
So Islami does implement distribution by dividing donations intended for this zakah by the eight groups stipulated in the Quran, and we try very hard to distribute that accordingly. Uh, we have recipients sign for donations when possible. And in the language of the Holy Quran, zakat and sadaqah are actually the same, but we have to know that in terms of fit, they are not. In practice, sadaqah is the term used to indicate voluntary charity given while remember zakat is one of the pillars of Islam and it is obligatory. So the zakat man, commonly called zakat, is due when a person's wealth reaches the nithab amount and can be paid any time during the year. So for example, let's say that in the month of Sha'aban, I sold a building and I had a hundred thousand dollar commission and I put that money in the, my safe and next year on that same day in the month of Sha'aban, I had not touched that money. I would write a check for two and a half thousand dollars to a charity that, um, make sure it goes to those eight groups of people. And it is to be paid by the head of the household, he or she, for each member of the family. Now that is eat all fitter, this is different. Um, the cut all fitter is about the price of one meal. And I'm gonna talk about that some more. I just wanna go through the basics with you and then I'm gonna sort of reiterate what I've said. Um, because the actual hadith describes it as a saw of barley, dates, raisins. And so a saw of certain dates, according to their kind, could be 25 or it could be $8. It's about six pounds. So um, what I know is that in America, if I actually have $10 and I go buy food, I can feed a lot of people. Now, if I have $10 and I go to a restaurant and eat, I will maybe get one meal for $10 only at certain places, not many places. So I noticed it here that the Islamic Association of Raleigh, North Carolina put it at 15. I think the Islamic Society of Central Florida put it at 12. Um, so a lot of those best uh, go with your local community on that. And let me uh, look to Surah al muminun Surah 23 verses one through four successful indeed are the believers truly a happy state shall attain the believers and here's the ones it's talking about those who humble themselves in prayer and who turn away from all that is frivolous and who are intent on inner purity and that is translated to mean in giving zakah inner purity is giving zakah so when we are talking about purifying ourselves when we're talking about tazkia when we're talking about elevating ourselves as seekers of the divine in the alchemy of happiness in pursuit of the alchemy of happiness, then this is part and parcel of that. Here again, we see prayer and giving uh, mission together um, in the Holy Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 155, and certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruit, but give death tidings to a sabarin, to the patient ones. Allah will destroy riba, it says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 276, use three and will give increase for sadaqah. So when we do riba, uh, now, let me make sure I clarify that. The majority of scholars say that you can buy a home, that it is a necessity, but that you should pay it off as soon as possible. They are not saying that riba is not haram. We cannot say that because the Quran makes very clear that it is, but they are saying that there's a concession because we don't live in an Islamic state. So Allah is saying that outside of that, Allah will destroy usury but will give increase. There will be a return on the sakata, on the sadaka, the deeds of charity, alms, etc. And the law likes not the disbelievers and sinners. So what's really interesting in this verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a comparison with riba and giving 
and help and the disbelievers and the sinners. So those who do not give, it's sort of alluded to in this verse of being compared to disbelievers and sinners. Another verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 274, those who spend their wealth in Allah's cause by night and day, in secret and in public, they shall have their reward with their Lord. Now, you know, people in the Western world will look to see which bank gives a half a percent more interest, perhaps, with their investment, their CDs, or whatever they're doing. That's the Western way of doing things. Imagine what the percentage of return is with Allah as a reject. And it's also a promise that those who give, their reward will be with Allah. They will not have fear and they will not grieve. Another beautiful verse in Surah Al-Baqarah is verse 261. The likeness of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is as the likeness of grain. He grows seven ears and each ear has a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase to whom Allah pleases, and Allah is all sufficient for his creature's needs, all knowing. In the hadith by the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he said, Give the sadaqa without delay, for it stands in the way of calamity. My beloved brothers and sisters, I want you to recognize that the cot is an insurance policy, it is a protection policy. So remember what our beloved messenger of Allah said when he was speaking about giving. Allah's apostle, may Allah be pleased with him, وسلم, used to say at the time of difficulty, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the majestic, the most forbearing. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the Lord of the tremendous throne. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the Lord of the heavens, and the Lord of the honorable form. And this is Sahih Bukhari. So literally, zakat, the trilateral root, za, kath, and ya, is to be clean. It is to grow. It is to increase. You will never lose by giving to Allah. So in Surah 24, verse 1, and Surah 23, verse 4, it means to be clean. In Surah Al-Baqarah 2, verse 43, it means to pay the obligatory charity. In Surah 1919 and Surah 1874, it means to be pure and innocent. In Surah 1881 and Surah 1913, it means to be better in purity. In Surah 5332, it means to justify. So the zakat means all of these things. It's not just anything. It's many things. Now, why should we pay zakat? Well, it is a command of Allah. It is a hukum of Allah. It gives us many blessings. But we should never do what Allah has asked us to do for what we can get. Remember, we should do everything we do for the sake of Allah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually commands us to go out and collect this money just like the IRS goes after you if you don't pay the IRS. Maybe not just like, but Allah does command us to go out and take it. So in Surah Talba, verse 103, it says, take alms out of their property. You would cleanse them and purify them thereby and pray for them. Surely your prayer is a relief to them and Allah is hearing and knowing. And this is why when we receive these funds from people and distribute, we pray for the people that give those funds. And last night we made dua for the people that had donated funds to the organization. So Allah commands us to go get it. I don't know of anybody that's doing that nowadays. They're probably afraid they might get hurt. But this is the command of Allah, that we actually go and collect it and pray and know that by doing it, we are helping people get cleansed and purified. This is part and parcel of elevating your ranks as a seeker of the divine in pursuit of the alchemy of happiness. In a hadith narrated by Allah's apostle, he said, what is translated to mean Islam is based on the following five principles. 
pillars to testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad وسلم, is Allah's apostle to offer the compulsory congregational prayers dutifully and perfectly, to pay zakat, that is alms, to perform hajj, and to observe fast during the month of Ramadan. And this hadith narrated by Ibn Umar is from Sahih al Bukhari. And Surah Al Tawbah, Surah 9, verses 34 and 35, listen to what happens if I do not pay zakat, if I do not purify myself. Listen to what Allah is saying. Those who hoard up treasures of gold and silver and spend them not in the way of Allah, give them the news of a painful punishment on the day when that wealth will be heated in the fire of hell and with it will be branded their forehead, their sides, and their backs. And it will be said to them, this is the treasure which you hoarded for yourselves. Now taste of what you used to hoard. Oh no, maybe I need that money for this. No, I think I might, I might bought that new suit. Or, well, you know, I've been thinking about buying a, a new car. You know, I got a 2021, but I want a 2022. So Allah has strongly warned, and I warn you today, those who are negligent in paying zakat. And there are people that will treat it like they treat the IRS. They look for every loophole in how they don't have to pay. On the authority of Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet Wasallam said, Allah has enjoined upon rich Muslims a due to be taken from their properties corresponding to the needs of the poor among them. And I'm underlining and highlighting among them. The poor will never suffer from starvation or lack of clothes unless the rich neglect their due. And if they do neglect their due, Allah will surely hold them accountable and punish them severely. And this is recorded by Atabarani. And another hadith, what about the cop that I have not paid in the past? Ibn Abbas reported a woman came to the messenger of Allah as a Rajal and said, my mother has died and fasts of a month are due from her. Thereupon he said, don't you see that if a debt was due from her, would you not pay it? He said, yes, I would pay on her behalf. Thereupon he said, the debt of Allah this is a debt, folks. Zakat is a debt that you owe to Allah. Thereupon he said, the debt of Allah deserves its payment more than the payment of anyone else. So I better pay that sister that loaned me $10, you know, but I'm not going to pay Zakat. What are the important principles in identifying assets subject to zakat? Gold, silver, cash, and other items are subject to zakat. Any other asset will only become subject to zakat if it was acquired or purchased with the clear intention to resell it. A Muslim will only be required to pay zakat if he or she has full and legal ownership of an asset. Most people who have a home that is not paid for, generally speaking, will not have to pay zakat for the most part. There are some exceptions. Zakat is payable on two and a half percent of the wealth of ones that one possesses above the nisab. And what is nisab? It is equal to the value of three ounces of gold is the minimum amount of wealth one must have and maintain for one lunar year before they are liable to pay that zakat. So you can go to http colon forward slash forward slash goldprice.org and it will give you the United States price for one ounce of gold and silver. Um, and so uh, you can look on that and let's just say, I, I think the other day when I did it, it was just under $2,000. So you would calculate that amount. And if you have that amount in cash savings in stocks, gold or silver and business worth and capital and other assets, 
or in all of the above, if you answer yes to any of the above, then you absolutely are required to pay the cut. And so I'm going to share my screen, inshallah. Let me make sure I do this so that you can see the form. Hopefully I am sharing that screen right now, inshallah. So you cash on hand, that's the balance held in bank accounts or in your safe. Um, this was the gold price that was calculated several years ago when I made this form. So you would substitute that with the price that you look up, uh, its current value, your business net worth, the merchandise and profits, investments in real estate. That's not your own home. That's real estate, rental properties, farms, property that is meant to be making money, rental properties. Jewelry that's not worn annually, livestock, the net value of motor vehicles. Now, you can go to Kelly Blue Book to get an idea of what your vehicle is worth. However, this would only be applicable if you have more than one car per, per driver. So if you have five people in your family and you have five cars, then you would not have to, you would be exempt from that. Any other income and then you total from one to nine, that's your total assets, you deduct your debts and expenses, and then you get the zakat eligibility. Um, you make sure that that exceeds the nisad, okay? And then you would multiply zero times 0 0.25, that's any payments that have already been made to zakat. So, in Surah Talba, verse 60, alms are for the poor and the needy and those employed to administer the funds for those whose hearts have been reconciled to the truth and those in bondage and in debt in the cause of Allah and for the wayfarer. Thus it is ordained by Allah and Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. So alhamdulillah, I wanted you to see that. Uh, the payment of zakat is to be paid locally to the Muslim community where the individual lives and earns his or her income. According to four major schools, the poor of this city have a prior claim over local zakat than the poor elsewhere. Now, what happened was they had so much zakat at the time of Rasulullah, so we saw them after it was implemented, that they were forced to send it outside. But we always want to make sure our neighbors are being taken care of here before we send our money overseas. And um, keep that in mind. Now, I want to talk about the Katal Fitter, which is for Muslims. It is an obligatory charity for every free Muslim, provided they have the necessary amount of food that is five pounds. Uh, or 2.03 liters of food, and I took it straight from, I believe it was Reliance of the Traveler or, or Bidayat on which Tahid a book on thick Islamic jurisprudence on the night before Aid and on the Aid itself. Now, what a lot of scholars recommend, a lot of scholars actually, that you pay this on the 15th. Why? Because we need time to get this money to the less fortunate in our community so that perhaps they could have nice clothing for our Eid and they would be able to go out and eat or be able to buy a feast for their family, inshallah. It is obligatory for one to support the persons listed below, whether one is male or female, when one has money in excess of one's own living expenses, what they need, and those of one's wife, meaning enough for a day and night, oneself taking priority over others, followed by one's wife who takes precedence over other family members. One's father, father's father, and on up. One's mother, grandmother, from either parent's side and on up. One's children, male and female, their children, and on down. If one's excess amounts to only part of the required zakat, one must pay as much of it as one has. Someone Negated to pay the zakat of Eid al Fitr must also pay it for every person he or she is obliged to support, that is, the dependents in their household, uh, such as his wife, 
and family if they are Muslim and if they have enough food that's five pounds per person above his own expenses and theirs. Now, if one is obliged to pay the zakat of Aid al Fitr only and one has enough to pay a part of it, then one begins by paying one's own, then that of one's wife, young child, father, mother, and then one's adult child who is without an income because he or she is chronically ill or insane. Otherwise, one is not obligated to support him or her. A wealthy woman married to a man that is too poor to pay her, i.e. all fits of zakat, is not obliged to pay her own. Imam Shafi says that the zakat of Eid al Fitr becomes obligatory when the sun sets on the night before the Aid, and that would be the evening of the last day of Ramadan. But think about in the modern world how hard it would be to get it to the needy families if you'd wait to the last minute to do it. And Surah al Baqarah reminds us, verse 177 it is not righteousness to faith, east or west. That righteousness is to believe in Allah in the last day, the angels, the book, and the prophets, and to give money out of the love for Allah to your relatives, orphans, the needy, the traveler, the beggar, and to ransom a slave, to establish salah and pay zakah in those who fulfill their promises and endure with fortitude, hardship, and peril. Those are the true in faith. And those are the pious. If you want to be a mutaki, if you want to be the doer of taqwa, if you want to see Allah in everything, my beloved brothers and sisters, you must give. You cannot pass this hukum of Allah. In Surah Azariyat, Surah 51, verse 19, and in their wealth is legal claim for the needy who ask and the deprived. So they actually have a legal claim in Islam uh, if they're being deprived and they are needy. So this is another reason why it's not justifiable to send our zakat outside when there are families in need and deprived right here in our community. When we have a family that perhaps can't actually move because they don't have the money, let's say perhaps they're living in conditions that are unhealthy, um, then these are very, very dire situations and they have a right, a legal right on our health. They should be able to.